Australia is a land of diversity, rich culture, history, and admittedly some of the most dangerous creatures on Earth. No wonder everyone on the internet is joking that every living creature in Australia can practically kill you. Australia truly has a lot to offer. We gathered some things that will surely pique your interest and make you want to visit the place. From the Pink Lake to Floating Forest, what they discovered in Australia shocked the whole world. Number 15. Pink Lake The Pink Lake in Australia is definitely one of the most intriguing and beautiful attractions the country can offer. Of course, upon seeing a lake that has a strawberry hue, most people will immediately be suspicious if the lake is poisonous, toxic, or it's safe to take a dip in its waters. The Pink Lake is actually a salt lake in the western part of Australia's Goldfields Esperance region. This isn't the only Pink Lake in Australia. There are a couple of these cotton candy-like lakes in the country. However, some of them are now only pink, historically, and some are beginning to lose their pinkish hue. For many years, researchers and scientists have been puzzled as to what causes the water's pink color. They found out that it contains a type of algae and bacteria that thrive in salty environments like the Pink Lakes. These algae and bacteria excrete carotenoid, which are red pigments that cause the Pink Lakes candy-like colors. It's technically safe to take a dip in the lake, but the reason why people aren't going there is because it's very hard to reach the lake. The park website advises its visitors to keep the lake undisturbed to preserve it. Plus, it isn't really good to take a dip on the overly salted lake anyways. So if you're planning to swim somewhere this vacation, then you just might want to check out the other wonderful beaches in Australia. Number 14. Gosford Glyphs Gosford Glyphs are one of the most intriguing and mysterious things found in Australia. The Egyptian civilization is an important part of our history, and even today archaeologists are still excavating sites to discover more about them. Imagine their surprise when they discovered a stone covered with Egyptian hieroglyphics in Kerryung, New South Wales in Australia. There were approximately 300 Egyptian hieroglyphics located at the site, and they're found near the confined Aboriginal petroglyphs in the area. However, ever since they've been discovered back in the 1970s, Researchers and academics have claimed that these hieroglyphics just might be a hoax. Scholars and professors claim that the way the artifact was cut is not the way the ancient Egyptians created the rock inscriptions. One theory is that the glyphs may have been carved back in the 1920s by Australian soldiers when there was a lot of interest about ancient Egypt after the tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered. Even if these glyphs are widely debunked, people are still trying to prove its authenticity and there are even records about the glyphs in the National Library of Australia in Canberra and the British Museum in London. Number 13. Marie Man The Marie Man is an incredible image that you can only see best in bird's eye view. The Marie Man was etched into a remote place in the southern part of Australia in 1998. The figure is about 2.5 miles into the land, and it's often thought to depict an Aboriginal hunter with a boomerang or a stick. It's technically one of the largest geoglyphs in the world, but its origin still remains a mystery. No one is really claiming its creation, nor did any eyewitness exist. Researchers tried to reference pictures from the Landsat 5 satellite of NASA. According to the images, the land where the Marie Man was located was still blank and clean on May 27, 1998, and the image just mysteriously appeared on June 12, 1998. One of the suspected creators is Bardius Goldberg, a Northern Territory artist that died back in 2002. He lived in Alice Springs, and he was known to be interested in creating a piece of art that would be visible from space. When he was questioned, he refused to deny nor confirm that he is indeed the one responsible for the image. Needless to say, the public was happy about the creation, and in 2018, adventurer Dick Smith even claimed that he will give a $5,000 reward for anyone who could give information regarding its creator. It was then backed up by the South Australian government, claiming that they will not pursue any legal proceedings against the creator if identified. Number 12. Thylacine The thylacine, or the Tasmanian tiger or Tasmanian wolf, is a large carnivorous marsupial that once roamed Australia extending north to New Guinea and south to Tasmania. Sadly, it's now believed to be extinct. Thylacines used to eat kangaroos and other marsupials, as well as small rodents and birds. The exact reason for their extinction still isn't known even today. However, it is believed that they simply lost competition to the dingo, which are the wild dogs of Australia. Another reason might be the hunting pressure from humans. 
Countless fossils have been reported from Victoria, southwestern Australia, as well as Queensland. Today, we only have their fossils to remember them by, but it's amazing to see that these creatures once roamed the Earth. Number 11. Figure 8 Pool The Figure 8 Pool is located in a rock shelf in Sydney's Royal National Park near Burning Palms Beach. It may be beautiful, but the waves there can certainly be dangerous. The perfectly H-shaped natural rock pool is certainly perfect for an Instagram picture. But if you ever plan to visit the pool, you must take note that there have been many instances where people got injured because they didn't expect the waves from the walk in the pools. If you get taken under the waves in the rock pool, there's a high chance that you'll sustain a serious injury. If you want to visit the place, it's better to calculate the tide and the swell to make sure that you'll have enough time to safely appreciate the figure eight pool. Number 10. Ball's Pyramid The Ball's Pyramid is a curious formation in the Pacific Ocean. It's one of the surviving above-ground remnants of the sunken continent of Zealandia. It's approximately 1,844 feet high, about 3,600 feet in length, and only about 980 feet across. It was discovered back in 1788, and it's named after the one behind its discovery, Royal Navy Lieutenant Henry Lidgebird Ball. It's the tallest volcanic stack in the world, and it's now part of the Lord Howe Island Marine Park in Australia, about 400 miles northeast of Sydney, New South Wales. What makes this formation amazing is that it was formed about 6.4 million years ago. However amazing this formation is, the waves and rough seas make it hard to approach and visit. That may be for the best so as not to disturb the last known wild population of Lord Howe Island stick insects. Number 9. Wave Rock The wave rock literally looks like a wave that has been immortalized. It's located in the Wheat Belt region of Western Australia, approximately 350 kilometers off southeast of Perth. It's also known as Catter Kitch by the Noongar. It's actually a curved granite cliff face that resembles a huge wave that's about to break. It's about 50 feet high and 360 feet long. This rock has been carefully created and rounded by weathering and water erosion. Its age is about 2,700 million years. Not far from the rock are springs that are active during the wetter months. It dissolves and redeposits chemicals in the granite, and it leaves red, brown, yellow, and gray stains of carbonates and iron hydroxide. Number 8. Cooper Cooper is Australia's largest dinosaur, and he might just be a new species of dinosaur that we knew nothing about. He is part of the Titanosaur family that lived about 100 years ago, and after about 15 years after the fossil's discovery, his species was finally given the name Australotitan cooperensis, or affectionately, Cooper the Dinosaur. It's estimated that this creature stood at about 21 feet high, and he was about 82 to 98 feet in length. This makes him the largest in Australia, and among the largest in the world. The fossilized bones were found on Mackenzie's family farm back in 2006, about 620 miles west of Brisbane in the Aramanga Basin. Number 7. Australian Southern Cassowary The cassowary is a close relative of the emu, ostriches, rheas, and kiwis. Many people claim that the cassowary may just be the most dangerous bird in the entire world. It's quite large as it can grow up to 5.8 feet tall. The cassowary is a very fierce bird. And if you ever face one while you're in Australia, you're better off avoiding it. If provoked, it will surely stand its ground and try to scare you off. If it has its chicks around, then be prepared to handle its strong legs and sharp claws. It has one thick claw in each foot, and one strike can cause you your death. Their feet are so powerful that they can use it to jump five feet off the ground. The feeling is certainly mutual with this bird, because they certainly don't like you either. Most of their population are found in northern Queensland, but they're also found through New Guinea and eastern Indonesia. If you ever find yourself on a trip in these locations, you know what to watch out for. Number 6. Shell Beach Many people admire white sand beaches, and many tourists usually consider these beaches as a must-visit during summer. But what do you think of a beach where instead of fine white sand, the shore is filled with tiny shells instead? The Shell Beach is located in the Shark Bay region of Western Australia, just about 28 miles southeast of Denham. The beach got its name because of the great abundance of the shells. These shells are of the cockle species, and because of the high salinity in the environment, as well as the lack of natural predators, cockles were able to proliferate freely in the area. 
The result is a picturesque beach where there is no sand, only about 10 meters deep of shells that stretch up to 70 kilometers. Number 5. Space Sample In 2020, Japan has successfully done the mission of taking an asteroid sample back to Earth. On December 5, 2020, a small capsule containing a sample of the asteroid Ryugu touched down within the remote Woomera prohibited area, about 310 miles northwest of the South Australian capital of Adelaide. Having these samples is crucial to understand space. However, bringing the samples here on Earth actually alters the asteroids. And now it's time for today's pick. Take a look at this picture. This is allegedly a part of a spacecraft that fell down the Australian waters. For decades, the Pacific Ocean has been the location of the Ocean Spacecraft Cemetery. In the past, other space facilities used the ocean to discard their creations. For instance, back in 1979, America's Skylab experimental station fell to the Earth, and it met its end with its parts scattering across the southern Australian coast. Even today, many scientists and researchers are wondering whether it's the right thing for us to dump our spacecraft in the ocean. Do you know of any other incredible shipwrecks in the ocean? If so, have you ever been to one of them? As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's pick and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Before we go on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. You just leave a like on this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. And that's it. Try it. Number four, glowworms. Glowworms are pretty amazing and fascinating animals. Glowworms are fly larvae that glow in the dark. They might be pretty to look at, but the reason why they glow is actually to attract and catch small insects. Glowworms can be found across Australia and New Zealand, and there are nine known species across the world. They're usually found in dark, wet environments, just like this so-called glowworm tunnel in Australia. These worms can only glow at this stage of their life, and once they turn into flies, they'll lose their ability to glow. But their life is actually kind of tragic, because they don't have working mouths. They not only can't feed themselves, but they also can't feed the larvae. The larvae are believed to live for approximately one year. Number 3. Laughing Kookaburra The laughing kookaburra is a bird in the kingfisher subfamily. These birds are native to the eastern mainland Australia but they also have been introduced to parts of New Zealand, Tasmania, and Western Australia. It's a well-known figure of Australia's bird life. It got its moniker because of its laugh-like calls. Needless to say, their morning calls and their dust cackling are pretty interesting. They're one of the monogamous animals, and so these guys mate for life. Their calls and their plumes make them remarkable creatures. Thankfully, they adapted quite well within the human population, and their numbers aren't really in danger. Number two. Cooper Petty. Cooper Petty is a special town in northern South Australia. It's located about 526 miles north of Adelaide. It's sometimes referred to as the opal capital of the world because of how many opals people can mine in there. These precious stones aren't the only ones that make this town special though because Cooper Petty is also known for their below ground dwellings called dugouts. People use this type of shelter to survive the scorching heat in the area. Average summer temperatures in the area range from 36 degrees Celsius during the day and about 20 degrees Celsius during the night. January is usually their hottest month when they experience days that are about 42 degrees Celsius. I don't know about you, but I couldn't really survive that heat. The dugouts are really cool though. They're not only houses, but they're also churches, bars, and a lot more. Most of these dugouts stay at the pleasant temperature of 23 degrees Celsius all year round. Most of these are actually homes created by miners that tried their luck in digging the precious glass-like opals. Nowadays, they're one of the attractions of the unique town of Cooper Petty. Number 1. Floating Forest Shipwrecks usually provide a new home for marine life to flourish. But did you know that even abandoned ships floating in the water can be a haven of new life? In the heart of Homebush Bay in Sydney lies a shipwreck that's more than 100 years old. This ship was supposed to be dismantled, but instead, it turned into one of the best attractions Australia's ever had. It used to be a military ship during the Second World War. But now, it's quite ironic that instead of weapons, it now carries trees, plants and life while floating peacefully in the waters. The ship is about 1,140 tons and is nearly 80 meters long. Now, this ship is an example that life can find its way even in the toughest environments. 
Because of how beautiful it looks, many photographers and tourists around the world visit Homebush Bay to see the floating forest. Have you ever seen any of the places or creatures in this list? If so, how was your experience? Do you know of any other things that are worth seeing or visiting in Australia? Let us know about your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.